Dear ladies, gentlemen. Andra boy NP Musa Polytropon Hosmala Pola Blank de Petroyes Hieron Polytron Eperse. You know, this is the beginning of the Odyssey from Homer. <laughs> And I'm so glad to be here because I'm 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 thinking since about 35 years about the fact that my parents forced me to make ancient Greek in school instead of learning English. <laughs> And I was wondering why, but now I know why. It is only to close the tremendous gap between the um, high-level speech of uh, Professor Erdemir back to the ground of commercial broadcasting I'm responsible for. <laughs> so um, thanks for the polite introduction. Uh, my name is Tobias Schmidt. Um, I'm very happy and, of course, honored to take part in this conference. Uh, and I certainly welcome the opportunity to present our perspective on the protection of minors in convergent media environment issue. As I'm speaking on behalf of the German broadcasting company Mediengruppe RTL Deutschland and uh, as the chair of uh, the German Broadcasting Association VPRT, uh, let me first share with you some thoughts on the initial position we find ourselves in. Today, There are two major challenges we face. One is globalization and the other is convergency. These two aspects have turned out to be nothing less than the real game changers for us, for the content industry. Today, content and particularly the audiovisual content is accessible from anywhere around the world. The internet, delivers, as you know, it directly onto our smartphones and into our living rooms and in the rooms of our children. This has already led to a tremendous market change. We are facing global competition. It is no longer national players we compete with, but globally positioned companies. In addition to that, there is our challenge number two. We are no longer just a broadcaster living in the good old television universe. Our viewers have access to a great variety of services when they want to watch whatever they would like to watch, wherever they would like to. And they do not care whether the desired content reaches them linear or nonlinear. In fact, looking at smart television, it has become more and more difficult to even distinguish any longer between these different ways. These two aspects do not only have great economic impact, they also change our relation to the regulators and regulation in general, and especially our efforts to an effective and enforceable protection of minors. Obviously, the actual risk potential of use protection offenses is increasingly <coughs> moving onto online multi-screen environment, which is unregulated to a great extent. Today's media regulation contains provisions to protect minors from more or less harmful content distributed by television and does not prosecute online compliance, such as radicalism, pornography, and sexual abuse of children in the same manner. And even if so, compliance with the rules on the internet often cannot or are not monitored or enforced by the media regulators consistently. Let me assure <clears throat> that we, as industry, feel strongly committed to the protection of minors and we absolutely and are absolutely aware of our great responsibility we take. We also value the protection of minor issues as crucial for our daily business and that not only for legislative reasons. Reputation, credibility and trust have become increasingly important for our viewers, all social stakeholders, and so, of course, for our media companies as well. I think there is a common sense that children are the most vulnerable to harm, abuse, and violence in both online and offline world. Fundamental rights, as granted in the UN Convention on the Rights of Child, are being increasingly threatened with the existence of the internet and the, and the digital technology. The awareness of these threats and risks in the digital era is important, but enforceable and integrated laws and effective technical measures 
and self-regulating mechanisms need to exist alongside this public attention on this topic. And regarding two, globalization and convergency, there is one thing we need to take care of in particular. We need to take care uh, to make sure that regulation does not punish only those who take responsibility and comply with the law, comply with the rules of protection of minors. That's why we have to take both challenges in account when we talk about a new regulation as we do at the moment on the European level and concerning use protection also on the federal level in Germany. The specific problem of this current situation is, as I said, that we are initially bound as national and or European media companies and the global competition to a regulatory framework does not, does not apply to globally positioned companies in the same way. As media is transmitted more and more globally, national regulation increasingly loses its, effect, its effects. While national laws forbid special content with regard to protection of minors, the same content, however, is made available from abroad. And, as I said, on the other hand, we have more or less the same issue also on the technical dimension between linear and non-linear media. We definitely need to ensure that the upright does not turn to be the stupid. So, is the current regulation, especially the ABMS directive, that's the audiovisual media service directives for all of you. They are not coming from Europe or not are mainly interested in media law. <laughs> audiovisual media service directive is the European legal framework for the, as I said, as it said, uh, audiovisual media services. And it is now coming into a so-called refit process, meaning that the European Commission takes a look on it if it is fitting the reality more or less. So. Is, it current regulation in the, is the current regulation in the conversion environment still adequate, was the question. In answering these questions, I will have to take, no, we will have to take one step back. We have, remind ourselves, we have to remind ourselves that all regulatory issues need to be tracked back to one essential question. What exactly is the purpose? What was this regulation actually made for? You know, regulation is not an end in itself. Regulation should help to reach a better result as the market itself would be able to. And regulation is also not primarily designed to make our lives difficult. Yeah. <laughs> as I just said, regulation should help to improve the market outcomes and it should protect those goods that are as important as the freedom of speech and press. So. Let's make the step back and ask ourselves which are the original regulatory objectives, only to try to find an answer for the um, incoming question. In order to find an answer, I think it makes sense to build about three clusters. And to be honest, in every media system, media law system I know, at the end you will find these three clusters on this or on that way. The first category of all actual media regulation I know um, is about consumer protection. That means normally quantitative and qualitative advertising rules or bans of advertising of special products. That's the first. The second, there is a category with all these contents that are socio-political desired, but that might come off badly if the market is left alone. This means content like news or information, regional or local content, or even offers for handicapped people which have all common that production is disproportionate costly compared to the realizable revenue in a commercial market. And the third category, I think the category, category we are talking about today, the third category comprises all what we call the absolute protective goods. These are goods like human dignity, media pluralism, and of course, protection of minor. These are goods that should be mandatory and not optional for all media. If now we take a look on the current media regulation on the European level, we have to note that the current system is no longer able to fulfill this purpose in total because our current regulatory system is graduated with regard not to these objectives, but to the different media genre, meaning the whole media regulation system is orientated to the technical way you get the content. There's a regulatory system for online, for 
um, for uh, on-demand, meaning linear, non-linear, for press, and so on. So it is orientated to the way you consume it, but not to the objectives of regulation. Maybe in early, earlier days, this graduation with regard to media genre would have been functioning when linear television was the only media which technically was capable to reach as many people, justifying such a tough regulation. But in times of digitization and technical convergency, there are more than one media genre with a comparable broad impact as the linear television. So nowadays, a graduated media regulation just with regard to the media genre will miss the original regulatory object objectives. Therefore, to secure a fair competition and a functioning media landscape, we have to change, so to say, from a vertical to a horizontal regulation which means to a graduation which is which with regard to objectives of regulation instead of just focusing on the type of media. So it is, so to say, a kind of a graduated level playing field. Therefore, you've got to know in Europe we have this level playing field discussion, meaning every media has to have, that's the idea, to has, has to have the same regulation level. And there is a misunderstanding because mostly we are talking about one level playing field and then starts a discussion about, yes, but uh, you only would like to get deregulated. On the other side, we've got to secure the protection of minors and so on. So that's why I think at the end, the answer is more or less simple. We need a level playing field for all audiovisual media, but this level playing field can have different levels. Levels orientated to the objectives of regulation, but not to the different medias. Therefore, to secure fair competition, as I said, we need this. So, we need a common and fair regulation for each objective, or to make it a bit more concrete, for example, to pres uh, preserve uh, the absolute protective goods, a level playing field on a high level for all media, audiovisual media content could be useful. In this case, from my point of view, high level means the level which is mandatory for linear broadcasting nowadays. Here, of course, a common labeling and a common self-regulation system between the different audiovisual media services or categories is getting more and more important So to guarantee that we don't get ridiculous results coming out of the different kinds of audiovisual media. On the other hand, for example, the limitation of refinancing could be well justified on a low level playing field, meaning that specific quantitative and qualitative rules of linear television could be cancelled or reduced while advertising bans for specific products apply to all media. So, at the end, let's flip the regulation from a technical system into a system that is orientated to the objectives of regulation. So far, some thoughts concerning the regulatory aspects of convergency. But what is about the second aspect? What is about the globalization of our market? What does all this mean for regulation in a global media world? In a global media world, we can no longer make a difference between audiovisual media coming from the US, France or Germany. But at the same time, when it comes to the protection of minors, we do also have to cope with cultural differences that lead to different classifications of content. We have to accept that and to take it into account. Maybe not in the extent some social networks do. One may find questionable if pictures of breastfeeding mothers are considered illegal nudity and at the same time don't have the same issues with uh, hate speech. But leaving the Facebook case aside, I really don't think that different classification with regard to cultural differences is a regulatory issue. We have international classifier conferences like the one today to discuss these differences and to bring us closer together and converge where possible which shows the importance of these conferences. I think and I really believe the European regulation is dealing with the protection of minors and the different cultures, uh, the cultural differences at the end in a very reasonable manner. You've got to know there are in the European Union via the AVMS directive minimum standards and at the same time we, we rely to the so-called country of origin principle. That means if you are placed in one of the EU member states and in the scope of the AVMS directive, then it is necessary to match the media law and, of course, the use protection law in this country. But then you are free to send in all the other European countries they are in the scope of AVMS without 
um, having all the fit with the different 27 other regulatory systems. So I think this is the European way. On the one hand, to respect differences between the different cultures and countries, but on the other side, at the same time, and commitment of minimum standards we need. And I see only two kinds of services put here effective protection of minors at risk. Those who try to evade the law and those coming from outside of Europe. The AVMS directive does have an answer to the first and takes care with circumvention. But it does not have an answer or a clear answer to those coming from abroad not willing to comply with European law, of course only to them. In order to get this problem solved, we might want to pursue a rather trivial concept. I think, and you may have heard it, the best aspect of EU regulation is the country of origin principle, because it gives to the companies, to the industry, the secureness, and at the same time, it minimizes the administrative um, administration we need. So let's take this idea as our trump card. I think the non-European company that would like to participate on this principle can go for a permanent establishment in Europe in case it wants to be subject to the European standards and has to accept it at the same time. In case it is not willing to do so, that's a free planet, they don't have to. But then, of course, every national law of every state they do business automatically applies. This, at the end, punts back the ball to regulatory authorities because they need to ensure whatever difficulties they face, that the rules of the protection of minors are actually enforced. This is the only way to effective protection of minors, and it is their task to assure that the upright no longer turns to be the stupid. So you see, I think there's a lot to do, and what is much better, there's a lot to think. I'm sure we live in a really fascinating time, so thanks a lot for your attention and a lot of success for your conference.